everyone, my name is Ellen and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to play Betty by Taylor Swift on the guitar. So stay tuned if this is something you want to learn. Make sure to subscribe to my channel, that way you never miss out on another new tutorial. And also follow me on Instagram for your chance to win a free lesson with me. Why you switched your homeroom, but I think it's cause of me. Alright guys, and before we jump into today's tutorial, I did want to just give a big thank you to today's sponsor, Black Mountain Picks. Black Mountain Picks are thumb picks that use an innovative spring design to hold the pick securely to your thumb. I've loved using these recently because not only are they super comfortable, affordable, and durable, but they don't slide or flip around on your thumb like other thumb picks I've used in the past. These picks fit multiple playing styles and are perfect for when you want to alternate between picking and strumming with ease. That makes them great for beginners and professionals alike no matter what stage you're at in your guitar journey. Best of all, you'll get fast shipping and awesome customer service with every purchase. So if you're interested in trying these out for yourself, make sure to check out the link in my description and never lose another pick while playing your guitar again. All right, so to play this song in the original key like Taylor Swift, go ahead and have your guitar in standard tuning and you do not need a capo to play this song. However, it is gonna fall a little bit more towards the intermediate level of guitar playing because there are 11 chords to play through this song as well as five different strumming patterns I wanna show you and one picking pattern. Of course, all of these are optional. You can decide which ones you like and you know mix and match however you want, but um, this is going to be a little bit more in depth of a tutorial, so let's go ahead and just jump into to the overview of what I'll be teaching you in this video. All right, so like I said, there are 11 chords to play through this song because there is a key change at the end and that's just always gonna add more chords. But the chords you need to know to play this song are C, C slash B, A minor, G, F, F minor, E minor, D, F sharp major, B minor, and A. So those are the 11 chords I will be teaching you in this tutorial and just keep in mind that the F, the F minor, and the F sharp major, and the B minor, those are all gonna be bar chords. So if that's something that you're having troubles, you know, getting down and anything like that, make sure to check out my TMT right here on how to get better at practicing those bar chords. But um, yeah, anyways, if you are familiar with all of these chords, that's perfect and we can move on. However, if you do want me to show you how to play those and break them down and show you the chord charts and all of that stuff, Make sure to skip to this time right here where I will go over all of these chords with you. Um, after that, we're going to jump into the strumming patterns that you can use for this song. Like I said, I'm going to be showing you five different strumming patterns that I personally like to use in my cover. However, you can always pick and choose which ones you like and which ones you can handle and which ones you think sound best. Um, but the first strumming pattern is just going to be one simple down strum on the beat for every chord change. I always suggest beginners start this way, especially if you are not used to singing and playing guitar at the same time. This is a really great way to kind of ease into that. Um, and I do actually use this strumming pattern through throughout the um throughout my cover as well. So if you want me to break this down for you a little bit, go over how to use it in the song, make sure to skip to this time right here. However, if you feel like you don't need to go through that, then that's fine. Let's go ahead and go into the second strumming pattern. All right, so as you can see, the second strumming pattern I will be showing you is just eight down strums, and it's gonna sound a little something like this. Now I like to use this pattern for the very end of the pre-choruses as well as the bridge. So if you want me to go through an example of how to break this down and give you a little bit more details on the rhythm and things like that, make sure to skip to this time right here. However, if you feel like you already got the rhythm just by watching me, then let's go ahead and move on to strumming pattern three. So strumming pattern three is the main strumming pattern that I like to use in my cover here at the end. As you can see, it's down, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up. And it's gonna sound a little something like this. Now this strumming pattern is gonna be a little bit more complicated because I do like to switch chords in the middle of the strumming pattern, which is denoted by this little vertical line that you see. So I would suggest going ahead and skipping to this time here so that I can further explain the strumming pattern to you. However, if you feel like you already got the rhythm and everything just by watching this little overview, then that's fine. We can move on to strumming pattern four. So strumming pattern four, as you can see, is really simple. It's just two down strums and a mute. And it's gonna sound a little something like this. Yeah. 
Now I use this strumming pattern very seldomly in the song, it's just in the middle of the bridge, but I am including it in case you want to play it the way that I played my cover. So if you want to break this down a little bit and let me show you where I use that, then make sure to skip to this time here where I will explain that. However, if you feel like you don't need to do that, we can move on to strumming pattern five. All right, so strumming pattern five, as you can see, is down, down, up, down, 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 down. And it's gonna sound a little something like this. So this strumming pattern comes into play a lot towards the end of the song, and um, it's also gonna be one of those ones where I'm changing chords in the middle of the strumming pattern. So if you want me to break this down for you and kind of slow down and show you where those chord transitions are gonna be and how to use it in the song and things like that, make sure to skip to this time here where I will further explain it. However, if you feel like you don't need to go through that and you can already hear the rhythm and things just from this overview, then let me go ahead and show you what I will be teaching for the picking pattern. All right, the picking pattern for this song is gonna be one of those ones that's actually really easy to play but sounds really beautiful. As you can see we're going to be playing the bottom note of each chord and then the third, second, and third string. So it's going to sound a little something like this. want me to explain that picking pattern in a little bit more detail, zoom in and show you guys what I'm doing, make sure to skip to this time here where I will um, do that and show you guys how to play the picking pattern a little bit more close up. However, if you feel like you kind of already got the feel of this song and you already feel like you know how to play it just from watching this overview, feel free to check out the playthrough at the end where I will go through the entire song and I'll have the chords and lyrics and everything you need to know listed on screen in front of you. But with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the more in-depth part of this tutorial and we'll start with the chords. All right, so I've zoomed in a little bit so we can take a closer look at these chords. Like I said, there are 11 in this song because of that darn key change, so let's go ahead and jump into it with our first chord, which is C, which looks like this and sounds like this. After that, we've got C slash B, which looks like this and sounds like this. After that, we've got A minor, which looks like this, and sounds like this. Next, we have G, which looks like this, and sounds like this. After that we have F, which is one of our bar chords, and that looks like this, and sounds like this. Then we have F minor, which looks like this, and sounds like this. After that we've got E minor, which looks like this, and sounds like this. After this, we're gonna jump into some of our key change chords. So we're gonna start with our D chord, which looks like this, and sounds like this. Then we also have our F sharp major chord, which looks like this, and sounds like this. Then we have our B minor chord, which is our last bar chord, and that looks like this, and sounds like this. And then the very last chord for this song is our A chord, which looks like this, and sounds like this. Those are the 11 chords you need to know to play the song. All right, so after you have those chords memorized, go ahead and take a few moments to practice transitioning between them. If that's something that you're currently struggling with, I do have a TMT right here on how to practice transitioning between chords faster. So make sure to check that out if that's something that you need help with. But um, moving on, let's go ahead and jump into the strumming patterns that you can use for this song. Far side of the gym. I was 
All right, so like I said at the beginning, the very first strumming pattern is the simplest one. It's just one down strum on the beat for every chord change. Again, I always suggest that beginners do this because it's really gonna help you be able to learn how to practice guitar and sing at the same time and things like that. It's also gonna prepare you for harder strumming patterns moving forward. So let me go ahead and just show you how you would use this in the song. If you put your C chord on, that's the very first chord in the song, and you're just gonna strum it down once. Then you'd move on to your next chord, which is C slash B, strum down once. Then we've got A minor, strum down once. Then we've got G, strum down once. All right? And so basically what you wanna do is take this one down strum pattern and practice singing the song with it while you're just doing that one down strum pattern. Um, so let's go ahead and go through verse one and I'll just give you an example of how you would use this. Again, I'm starting with my C chord. One, two, three, four. Betty, I won't make assumptions about why you switched your homeroom, but I think it's cause of me. Two, three, four. Betty, one time I was riding on my skateboard when I passed your house. It's like I couldn't breathe. So as you can see, super simple. It's really great for practicing and if you're a beginner and things like that. But I do actually like to use this in the uh, cover itself and I'll usually use this at the end of the pre-courses. So if you wanna see an example of that, make sure to watch my playthrough here at the end. Um, but with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the second strumming pattern. So as you can see, our second strumming pattern is just eight down strums. It's a very straightforward rhythm. So let's go ahead and just go through what this would sound like. I've got my C chord on, and you're just gonna strum down eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so super simple. Um, but what we're gonna do here is we're going to emphasize certain ones of these down strums to kind of give it a little bit more of that rhythmic feel. So as you can see, I'm gonna underline the ones that I want you to emphasize, and that's our first, our fourth, and our seventh beat. So when you have that, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right? So hopefully you can hear when you emphasize those certain beats, it kind of drives the rhythm a little bit more. And I think that this sounds great with parts of the song. I personally like to use this for the very end of the pre-choruses as well as the bridge. So let me go ahead and give you an example of what this sounds like in those areas. So the first part is at the end of the pre-chorus, the worst thing that I ever did was what I did to you. So from there, I'm going from the first strumming pattern into the second strumming pattern. So we've got the worst thing that was what I did to here on the word you we're gonna do second strumming pattern you all right so we've got our F chord on one two three four five six seven eight then you go to your G chord one two three four five six so it is basically the only place I like to use this strumming pattern. I will also sprinkle it into the bridge a little bit as well. But like I said, if you want to hear how I would suggest doing it for your cover, you can always look at the playthrough here at the end where I'll list everything that I'm doing. Um, but that does conclude strumming pattern two and how I like to use it. So let's go ahead and move on to strumming pattern three. So like I said earlier, strumming pattern three is going to be kind of the main strumming pattern that I like to use in this song. As you can see, it's down, down, up down, up, down, 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 up. So let's go ahead and go through the motions of this strumming pattern first. If you have your C chord on, since that's the first chord in the song, let's just go through the motions. We've got down, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up. All right, if you're a beginner, um, I know sometimes this can be hard for beginners, so just remember that when you have a down followed by a down strum or an up followed by an up strum, it can be a little counterintuitive intuitive to remember to kind of circle your hand back around for those double downs or those double ups. So just keep that in mind for this strumming pattern. Um, but let's go ahead and now put this in rhythm so you guys can hear what this strumming pattern sounds like in rhythm. So I'll go ahead and play it for you once. One, two, three, four. Down, down, up, down, up, down, down, down. So go ahead and put your C chord on and try that with me and I will count us in. One, two, three, 
four. Down, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up. All right, awesome. So that is the rhythm of this little uh, strumming pattern here. What I want you to do now is we're going to put a vertical line in the middle of this strumming pattern, and that's going to represent where you're gonna be doing your chord transition. So basically, we just practiced this whole thing through with our C chord, but in the actual song, I like to break it up between different chords. So in this example, we would be going from our C chord for the beginning of this strumming pattern to our C slash B for the end of it, all right? so. Let me go ahead and show you what I mean by that. With my C chord on, I've got the beginning of the strumming pattern. Down, down, up. Then I'm gonna to switch to my next chord, which is C slash B, and finish it out. Down, up, down, 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 up. All right, so one more time. We've got C, down, up, C slash B, down, up, down, 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 up. All right, and that's gonna be true for the rest of the chord progressions as well. So the next would be A minor to G. A minor is gonna be at the beginning. Down, down, up. Then you go to G and finish it out. Down, up, down, 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 up. All right, so let's do that whole little um, chord progression there. We've got our C chord on. Down, down, up, C slash B. Down, up, down, 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 up, A minor. So go ahead and put your C chord on and let's practice that together without stopping. I'll count us in. One, two, three, four. C, C slash B, A minor, G. Awesome. So let's do that one more time. One, two, three, four. C, C slash B. So hopefully you can hear where those chord transitions are going to be in the middle of the strumming pattern. And now this is going to apply for most of the song where we'll be um, changing chords in the middle of the strumming pattern. However, sometimes you do hold this entire strumming pattern out for the entire chord. So basically this will make sense when I play through the first little verse for you. So let me just show you what I mean. Notice here how some of these chords are going to be switched in the middle of the strumming pattern and some of them will be held out for the entire strumming pattern. So we've got our C chord on. Down, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up, A minor to G. Then here on F, we're going to hold out the whole pattern. Down, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up. Then we go back to G and hold out the whole pattern. Down, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up. All right? So just keep in mind when you're going through this song that sometimes it's going to be switching chords in the middle of the strumming pattern and sometimes you're going to be holding it out for the whole thing. So go ahead and put your C chord on and let's play through that together without stopping. I'll count us in. One, two, three, four. C, C slash B. able to hear the rhythm of that pattern. So again, I like to use this for the majority of the song when I'm not picking. So that's going to be basically all of the choruses. So again, if you want to hear an example of how this sounds in the song the way that I would suggest playing it, you can always skip to the playthrough here at the end. But um, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into our fourth strumming pattern. All right, so our fourth strumming pattern is arguably one of the easier strumming patterns. As you can see, it's just two down strums followed by a mute. So let me go ahead and show you how this would sound if you put your C chord on, that's the first chord in the song, and you're just gonna strum down twice. And then you're gonna take your hand and mute the strings. So you can do this a number of ways. You can have an open hand and just 
tap the strings to mute them. You can also have a fist, tap the strings. Um, I usually just use the side of my hand here while I'm playing. <laughs> and I'll just kind of mute it that way. It doesn't really matter as long as it's comfortable for you and as long as you're stopping the strings from ringing, that will accomplish the mute. So let me go ahead and just show you how you could use the strumming pattern. Um, I'm gonna start at the beginning with my C chord. We've got C mute, C slash B mute, A minor, G, F, twice, assumptions about why you switched your home room, but I think it's because of me. All right, so the thing about my tutorials is that I like to give you guys a bunch of different options for strumming and picking and stuff like that. I do have my suggested pattern order at the end, but again, if any of these strumming patterns are a little bit difficult, you can always just choose which one you like the best and apply it for the whole song. Um, that being said, I do actually only use this strumming pattern a few times in the song, and it's going to be in the middle of the bridge. So in the bridge portion, she sings, I was walking home on broken cobblestones just thinking of you when she pulled up like a figment of my worst intentions. Excellent lyrics, by the way. Um, so what I'm doing there is um, I'll usually go from strumming pattern two, which is the all down strums. I was walking home on broken cobblestones just thinking. And then here on the F chord, that's where I'll do strumming pattern four. Of you when she pulled up like, and then G, a figment of my worst intentions. And that's literally the only place I use it throughout the um, cover at the end. I just wanted to throw it in here in case that's a strumming pattern that you like. You can use it for the whole song if you want to. Like I said, um, you always wanna just go with whatever you naturally feel rhythmically. It's gonna help you a ton when you're trying to play through the song and sing at the same time. But anyways, with that being said, we have just one strumming pattern left, which is strumming pattern five. All right, so strumming pattern five is gonna be kind of like strumming pattern three in the fact that it's one of the main strumming patterns that I use throughout my little cover at the end. As you can see, it's down, down, up, down, 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 down. And I know it sounds a little bit complicated, but I think once you hear the rhythm, you're really gonna be able to understand where I'm coming from on this one. Again, let's go ahead and just go through the motions. So let's put our C chord on since that's the first chord in the song and go through the motions. We've got down, down, up, down, 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 all right? So again, it's gonna be really important for you to remember to circle your hand around between all those uh, sequential down strums. So we've got down, down, up, down, 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 all right? So it'll make a lot more sense when I put this in rhythm. So let me go ahead and show you what it sounds like in rhythm. One, two, three, four. Down, down, up, down, 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 down. So go ahead and put your C chord on and try that with me. One, two, three, four. Down, down, up, down, 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 down. All right, awesome. So um, again, this is one of those ones where I'm gonna be switching chords in the middle of the strumming pattern. So let me put those lines back in there for you again. Each of these vertical lines represents um, a different chord for that little section of the strumming pattern, okay? And I think again, once you hear it, it'll make a lot more sense. So I like to use this strumming pattern at the end of the song, and by then we've had a key change, so I wanna go ahead and use the chords that you'll hear at the end of the song just to have it make more sense. So those chords are D, A, and G, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're going to break up this strumming pattern and put the D at the beginning, the A in the middle, and the G at the end. So let me play it for you so you can just kind of hear. With our D chord on, we've got down, down, up, down. Then we have A, down, down, and then G, down. All right, so you can hear how I'm kind of splitting up this strumming pattern. D, A, G, all right? And that is the rhythm too. We've got down, down, up, down, 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 all right? So why don't you go ahead and put your D chord on and try that with me. With our D chord, we're just doing the beginning of this pattern, so we've got down, down, up, down, then switch your A chord, down, down, and then your G chord, down. All right? So let's do that in rhythm without stopping. One, two, three, four. D, down, up, down, A, A, G, two, three, again. D, down, up, down, A, A, G, two, three, four,
hopefully you're kind of hearing the rhythm there. Again, I just like to use this at the end of the song, so it is gonna mostly be with just those chords. So let me just show you again at the end of the song so you can kind of hear what it sounds like with the um, singing. We've got standing in your cardigan, kissing in my car again, stopped at a street light, you know I miss you. And that's how I like to use that strumming pattern. Throughout my cover though, at the very end here, I actually go back and forth between the fifth and third strumming pattern. So I know that sounds really confusing, but let me just go ahead and show you how that would sound. So with my D chord on, I've got strumming pattern five. Down, down, up, down, switch to A. Down, down, switch to G, down. And then while I'm on my G chord, I'll just go back to strumming pattern three. Down, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up. I know this sounds super, super complicated, but trust me, if you take each of these strumming patterns and practice it on your own, like each one individually, then it'll be a lot easier to transition between these different strumming patterns. So we've got strumming pattern five on our D chord. Down, down, up, down, A, G. Then back to strumming pattern three. Strumming pattern five. So it gets a little bit hairy there at the end going back and forth between strumming pattern five and three. Again, this is all up to you. If you find any of this too complicated or difficult, you can always just choose your favorite strumming pattern and go with that for the whole song. I think that'll sound great too. Um, but I just wanted to kind of explain how I did it in my cover since a lot of you guys were asking how I did mine in my cover. So um, with that being said, that covers all of the strumming patterns that I use in this song. So the last thing I wanted to show you guys was a picking pattern that is actually quite simple. That sounds really great with this song. So let me zoom in and show you guys this picking pattern. All right, so I've zoomed in a little bit so we can learn this picking pattern together. If any of you are unfamiliar with my other tutorials, I do like to refer to my strings as numbers. So let me just zoom in and show you how I refer to them. So my low E string is gonna be six and that's gonna go five, four, three, two, one, all the way to the high E string, which is one. And so for the rest of this little picking portion, I will be referring to my strings as numbers. So hopefully you find that easier to um, understand like I do. Um, but anyways, let's go ahead and jump into it. So let me go ahead and show you what we're going to do for each of the chords in this song that we're going to use picking for. Let's start with our C chord since that's the first chord in the song. What I want you to do is with your thumb you're going to be playing the sixth, fifth, and fourth string uh, depending on you know which chord you're on. So for our C chord we're going to be our, on our fifth string. So go ahead and put your thumb on the fifth string. Then I want you to take your pointer finger and put that on the third G string and then your middle finger and put that on the second B string. So so for the rest of this picking portion, your pointer and your middle finger are never going to stray from these two strings. They're always going to be on three and two. But your thumb is going to move back and forth between the bass note of each chord, depending on what chord you're playing. So like I said, the C chord, the bass note is our five. So with our C chord, we have five, three, and two. And what we're going to do is go five, three, two, three. All right, that's the whole picking pattern. Five, three, two, three. Awesome, super simple, right? So the next chord we have is our C slash B, and this is actually gonna look exactly like our C chord. So again, we've got five, three, two, three. All right, then we've got our A minor chord. Again, your right hand is not changing. We've got five, three, two, three. And then for our G chord, your right hand is gonna change a little cause your thumb's gonna go from your fifth to your low E string on your sixth, okay? But the rest of the pattern is the same. So we've got six, three, two, three. 
So let's go ahead and go through those four chords again because that is the majority of the picking pattern. Five, three, two, three, five, three, two, three, five, three, two, three, six, three, two, three. C, C slash B, A minor, G. Awesome. So um, let's go ahead and go through the other chords you will need to know for this picking pattern. The next one we have is our F chord. And for this, it's going to look like your G chord where on your right hand, where you're going to be going six, three, two, three. Right? So for our F chord, we've got six, three, two, three. And then for your E minor chord, that's the last chord you'll ever need to, you know, pick for this song. And that's going to look the same. It's also six, three, two, three. All right, so just to recap, we've got our C chord, which is five, three, two, three. Then we've got C slash B, which is five, three, two, three. Then we've got A minor, five, three, two, three. Then we've got G, six, three, two, three. We've got F, six, three, two, three. And we've got E minor, six, three, two, three. And these six chords are the only chords you need to know picking for. Obviously, we are going a little bit slow compared to the, you know, original song. So let's go ahead and speed this up to tempo so you can hear what it sounds like together with singing. So go ahead and put your C chord on and let's get through this together at tempo. I'll count us in. One, two, three, four. C, C slash B, A minor. of me Betty one time I was riding on my skateboard when I passed your house it's like I couldn't breathe nice and so basically if you can do that you have basically the entire picking pattern down the only place that it's going to change a little bit is on that very last pre-chorus before the key change to the end of the song. Um, she does add that E minor uh, chord in there. So for that little um, run, we're going to go C, C slash B, A minor, G, F. And then here, instead of holding F twice, you're going to go to E minor and then G twice. One, two. So it's a little bit different at the end there. Let me go through that one more time. We've got C, C slash B, A minor, G, F, E minor, G, twice. So um, yeah, that is how you play the picking pattern. Again, I like to put that for most of the verses in this song, but again, feel free to stick with strumming if you're more comfortable with that. But um, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the playthrough for this song. This is Betty by Taylor Swift. Good luck. Betty, I won't make assumptions about why you switched your homeroom, but I think it's because of me. Betty, one time I was riding on my skateboard when I passed your house. Like I couldn't breathe. You heard the rumors from Inez. You can't believe a word she says most times, but this time it was true. The worst thing that I ever did was what I did to you. Showed up at your party Would you have me? Would you want me? Would you tell me to go help myself? Or lead me to the garden? In the garden Would you trust me if I told you? 
from the far side of the gym I was nowhere to be found I hate the crowd, you know that Plus I saw you dance with him You heard the rumors from Inez You can't believe a word she says most times But this time it was true Showed up at your party Would you have me? Would you want me? Would you tell me to go help myself? Or lead me to the garden In the garden Would you trust me? If I told you it was just a summer thing I'm only 17 I don't know anything But I know I miss you A fake bit of my worst intentions She said games and in Let's drive Those days turned into nights Slept next to her bed I dreamt of you all summer long dream about what happens when you see my face again the only thing i want to do is make it up to you so i showed up at your party Showed up at your party Yeah, I showed up All right, guys, so that does conclude today's tutorial on how to play Betty by Taylor Swift. I really hope you liked it. If it did help you, make sure to give me a thumbs up down below as well as to subscribe to my channel. That way you never miss out on another new tutorial. Here are my social media sites in case you'd like to follow me on any of those. That's just where I do fun things like behind the scenes looks at things coming up. I'll poll you guys on things you wanna see. And this is also where I go to find someone to feature in my new segment, Forever Features. This week we have Nicole from Brazil performing August by Taylor Swift. Let's give it a listen. Wow, you sound amazing, Nicole. If you want to be my next feature, follow me on Instagram at xforeverfaithfulx and post a short cover of you playing any song you learn from any of my tutorials. Use the hashtag forever features in the description so I can find it, and the next feature spot could be you. 
Thank you again to Black Mountain Picks for sponsoring today's video. It really helps me to be able to continue making these free tutorials for you guys. And one last little plug, if you liked the shirt I was wearing in today's tutorial, this is my Okapo design and you can find this along with a lot of other different designs in my merch store linked down below as well as under this video. But I think that concludes today's tutorial, so thank you again so much for watching. I hope it helped and I will see you in my next one. Bye!